Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. And today I'm predicting the A-level maths paper one in 6th October, 2025, going through the last 17 papers to make sure that these predictions are completely up to date for you. So let's start here with transformations of graphs. Again, now roughly the same at 72%. So often, but doesn't appear every time. And here we've got a typical question working with a sine function. And here we need to work out from the graph, the amplitude, the period, and the y-intercept. Make sure you can work with any kind of function and it being transformed. On to functions, so here at 122%, that basically means it's going to appear in some shape or form, and usually a fairly long question as well. Here in this case we need to sketch the inverse, so using this idea of the reflection line of y equals x, so making sure you know that fact. If you're struggling with all these different facts for the A-level math paper one, I've got a nice surprise for you at the end, and then actually doing some algebra here and working out both the inverse function itself and the domain in this case, but also range as well is also useful. On to binomial expansion, slightly up here at 133%. No surprises that it comes up pretty much every year. This is a typical question here. We're going to give you some expression to the power of 4, power of 5, power of 6, and then using, for example, the term independent of x, so just the numbers equal to 150. And by knowing that fact, you can actually work out k and then the coefficient of x squared in the expansion. So this is a very typical style question. Radium measure, again, pretty much comes up every year, or sometimes, yeah, one and a half, that kind of idea. And here, again, this is a very typical question, some sort of sector usually, or it can be a compound shape as well. They give you a variety of different information. You might have to work backwards. So knowing the formula of the area of a sector, so a half r squared theta, all working in radians, of course, hence radium measure, and the arc being r theta, essentially want you to be able to work with those formulae very comfortably using radians. Equations of circles at 78%, so this doesn't come up every year, but if it does, it's usually in quite a big way. So here, for example, we've got two circle equations, and here we need to find the distance between the center of the circle, so we need to convert this into the same form as over here, and then you can simply use Pythagoras to work out the distance between the two centers. Sequence and series, again, up here, so it's coming up more often now, sequence and series questions, and usually quite big as well. This is question 10. Also towards the more difficult end as well. Never thought of it as more difficult, but they generally do put it towards the end. So here, knowing arithmetic and geometric progressions and sequences is really, really important. Trig identities equations, slightly down here at 106%, but I would say that's just general fluctuations between the papers, maybe not putting so much emphasis on this. Uh, notice they can also do this, so the exact solution, and that means you really can't use a calculator, you need to know them in terms of um, root 3 over 2 or a half, so knowing what cos pi over 6 is, so this is cos 30 degrees, and knowing, for example, that's equal to root 3 over 2 is a really important fact here. Um, also quadratics. Now I put another trig equation here, but this is my reason. So even though strictly speaking here, this is a trig equation question, so it fits in the other category, we can actually uh, use this idea of let u equal sine squared theta, therefore u squared is sine uh, theta to the power of 4. And so we can transform this into a quadratic that we solve. So even though quadratics itself per se doesn't come up as an individual question that often, it's often integrated into other questions. If you're not sure about the quadratics in general, then do check out the video above. On to the big two topics here, which is integration is the first one, so 172%. Not a surprise, it usually comes up once, mostly twice on the exam, usually the more difficult questions. This is very typical, so you have to find the x-coordinates of the points of intersection and then use that to work out the area of the shaded part. And on to differentiation, also towards the end, again, a whopping 211% because it's often integrated, that's not a pun, uh, into integration questions. You often have to use differentiation within them. That's why it's slightly higher here. And this is very typical. So we're working out the first and second derivative in terms of k, and then we're actually working out the coordinates of the stationary point given k, and then determine its nature. So is it a max? Is it a min? or point of inflection. You can do that in a few different ways. You can use the second derivative, which makes sense here, or you can use this idea of when the gradient changes from plus to minus as well, that's also possible. 
So here are all the frequencies of every single question. Again, I haven't talked about everything in this video, like coordinate geometry, which again, integrated into things like equations of circles, is also certain to appear. But this gives you a good idea of what appears. Volumes of revolution, again, this can appear, but again, a 22% shouldn't be your priority for revision. But if you want to get those really top marks, make sure you do spend at least some time to revise that. And if you're struggling to keep all these formulae in your mind ready for that paper on the 6th of October, I've created an A-Level Maths Paper 1 cheat sheet. So it has all the formulae and all the information you need in a nice, neat document. So you don't have to try and find all these formulae for yourself. And again, you can check out the video in front of you if you like to download a free copy.